Would you like your alcohol marker colouring to do justice to all those amazing stamps in your collection? Hi there, I'm Ali and maybe like you, I'm hugely into stamping and love how colouring them in with alcohol markers gives amazing, vibrant results. But I see so many crafters questioning why their colouring doesn't come out quite as they expect. Whether that's blending going wrong, stamped images smudging or ink bleeding outside the lines. So I've made this video to cover everything you need to know about colouring stamped images with alcohol markers. From the materials and tools you'll need and why, to seven colouring techniques to try from beginner to expert level and everything in between. Are you ready to learn? Then let's go! Let's start with the type of paper or cardstock you are using for your project. Like with many creative techniques, this will make or break your success. You need something that is great for stamping on, but that will hold a decent amount of alcohol ink, especially for some of the more complex techniques we're going to cover in this video. The key features you are looking for is a heavyweight, fairly thick card or paper with a smooth surface. I usually reach for something like this Nina Classic Crest card from Crafters Companion. Other brands make similar products, this Dovecraft version is almost exactly the same. The other option is bristle board, which is favoured by many crafters and marker artists. It's slightly heavier in weight, but otherwise pretty similar. Remember, something thick with a smooth surface for colouring on will get you the best results. Next up is the ink you'll use for stamping. Choosing the right formula is key to getting a crisp image. My favourite is the Memento line of inks. These are water-based dye ink pads. Choosing a water-based ink means the alcohol ink in the markers won't reactivate your stamped image. Remember, water reacts with water, alcohol reacts with alcohol. Black is a classic colour and would be my first recommendation, but there's no reason to stop there. Neutral greys and browns make great colours for line art. I like to use browns when creating a vintage look. And you can also use navy, burgundy and other dark colours, or even pastels to change things up. It's really fun to experiment with different colours to see how it changes the tones of an image and the look of your finished project. Now, of course, you'll need some stamps to colour in. There are many amazing companies out there making wonderful stamp designs. I will list a few of my favourites in the description box. When it comes to designs, the sky's the limit, but for stamp materials, you have three main options. Red or grey rubber stamps, either on a wooden block or unmounted, also called cling stamps, is the original rubber stamp material generally said to give the most detail. Photopolymer is a newer technology, giving crisp results and more options. Acrylic or silicone stamps are the cheapest option and can give good results, but you may not get as crisp of an image as you might with rubber or photopolymer. You just need to choose designs with open spaces for colouring for the techniques I'm sharing in this video, so any style you love will work. For great results with stamping, I wouldn't be without my stamp positioners. These tools use magnets and a hinged lid to allow you to stamp several times in exactly the same spot, so they are great to ensure you get a great stamped image every time. However, you don't have to have one of these. Acrylic blocks will work just fine too and are much cheaper. Many of us already have these in our craft rooms and they're very versatile. Alcohol markers will always bleed through the back of the cardstock, so make sure to protect your desk or surface if you're worried about damaging it. I've been using this glass mat lately in my craft room because it's so easy to clean and ideal for many different messy techniques. Another option is a silicone craft mat if you have less space as it's easy to roll up and store away. If you don't have either of these, you can also simply just use an extra piece of scrap paper or cardstock under your project. Now you may have noticed there's one more thing we haven't covered yet. Of course you'll need some alcohol markers to create your beautiful coloured images. I'm using the Arteza Everblend markers in this video, which are a great affordable option that are still high quality. I have the Flora Tones and the Portrait Tones sets here. Arteza sell two different styles of these markers, the Everblend Pro in the grey barrel and the regular Everblend in the white. Both are double-ended markers with vibrant, rich inks in a rounded triangular barrel to stop them rolling off your desk. The main difference, which is the same with all alcohol markers, is the nib options. Both have a chisel nib on one end, but on the other, the Pro has a brush nib and the regular have a fine nib. Honestly, I think both styles are great. Really, it comes down to personal preference and which style of nib you prefer to colour with. The other differences with these markers are the packaging. The Pro markers come in a lovely black box with a removable storage insert inside. You can also flip back the lid to prop up the box for easy access. All the colours are also printed on the lid of the box. In contrast, the regular Everblend come in a plastic case with three trays inside that slide out. You can lay the box on its side and use the trays like drawers, which is pretty handy too. Now something I really recommend with any medium, but especially alcohol markers, is to make your own set of swatches, preferably on the paper that you'll be using them on. This helps you to get to know the true shades of every marker, which can be really difficult to replicate on the plastic barrels because it's a very different material to ink. I've created my swatches on individual cards and stored them in a binder. This makes it a doddle to match the colours to other elements on your project, or to find shadow and highlight shades, which we'll be exploring in some of the techniques later on in this video. If you're looking to get more for your money and aren't fussed about Lux packaging or brush nibs, the regular Everblends are a great option. And honestly, I didn't find any difference in nib or ink quality between the markers in the two sets. And I was very impressed with them both. Arteza very kindly sent me these markers to try out and they have given me a personalised discount code that you can also use to get 10% off at Arteza if you'd like to try them for yourself. 
I've popped the code in the description box if you're interested. Now we know all about the best materials to use, let's move on to the techniques. I wanted to show you the differences between using a stamp positioner and an acrylic block. I prefer to use a stamp positioner for a large stamp like this one, as the larger size means they're more likely to under ink or miss parts of the stamping. As you can see, the stamp positioner makes it easy as pie to stamp again in the same spot and darken up the lines. In contrast, with an acrylic block you can only stamp once, but you can still get a great impression. Just be sure to apply firm, even pressure over the whole area of the stamp and usually you'll get a brilliant result that's hard to distinguish from the one we did with the stamp positioner. Like I said, use what you can afford, use what you've got in your craft room. The more you stamp, the better you'll get at it. Here's a few more images I've stamped that we'll be using in this video to demonstrate the techniques. As you can see, changing the colours really gives a different look to your stamping. I reach for my brown almost as often as my black inks. And who's to say you have to use the same colour all over either? I love this navy and burgundy combo that I've done here. Now, let's move into the seven colouring techniques I have to share with you today. There's techniques suitable for all levels, so whether you're a beginner or an expert, there is going to be something here that you're going to love. We'll start with the simplest, which is flat colouring. I like to think of alcohol markers as a fancy, grown-up version of the felt tips I used to use as a child. One of the great things about these is that as long as you add enough ink, they don't leave behind brush strokes, so the areas of colour look really smooth and vibrant. There's no reason you have to do any shading. And in fact, I think flat colouring looks really great on stamped images with super detailed line work. No one's going to see the super tiny detailed shading anyway, so why waste your time? These markers also dry super fast, so they're a great medium to use when you need to get a project finished quickly. And similarly, this is the perfect technique to use when you don't have a lot of time. And it still looks great. Moving on to technique number two. This uses a single marker to add depth and shading to your colouring. The key to this technique is to leave your layers to dry in between, otherwise your shading will just blend away. I'm putting down an initial layer of each colour where I want it, and then going back to the first shade, the yellow, when I can be sure all the other ink on the page is dry. I'll use the same yellow marker to add more ink just where I want a darker shade, in this case, in the centre of the candle flames. You can also use this technique to create tone-on-tone -tone patterns or larger areas of shadows, though bear in mind that effect will be subtle. Don't forget, you can also layer different colours over each other to get new shades. Here I've layered the red and yellow markers over the blue to get a different shade. With alcohol markers, you can use lighter colours on top of darker colours, and you'll get different effects. So this whole piece here was coloured with just four marker shades, but there is a lot more depth here than you might expect from four colours. This is great if you only have a small set of markers but want to stretch what you do have. These are probably the most popular techniques you will see in tutorials as they really take advantage of the unique blending qualities of alcohol markers. With two marker shading, I'll start by colouring my base colour, a pale yellow, all over this lemon. Then I'll take a slightly darker yellow and add depth and shadow to the lemon. Here I'm adding the suggestion of a rounded shape with the darker shade. Lastly, I'll go back with a lighter yellow to blend the two shades together and make a seamless transition. If this still isn't striking enough for you, then you can go one step further and add a third shade. Again, start with your lightest shade all over, then add your medium shade where you want the shadows to be, blend that one out with your lighter shade so the edges are seamless and smooth. This was exactly what we did for the two marker shading. Once you're happy with that, go in with your darkest shade just in the areas you want to be the very darkest. Then blend the darkest shade out with a little more of your medium shade and then finally go back to the lightest shade to blend them all together. Maybe that sounds a little complicated, but you essentially go light to dark and then back to light again. There's a reason this is a popular technique as it's really fun to master and looks really bold. It's probably the technique that I use the most often. Now we're getting into the more complex techniques, but honestly, I don't think any of what I'm showing you in this video are impossible to master. This rough strokes technique is all about adding texture to your colouring. We'll start with a base layer of our lighter shade. As you might have noticed, this is a running theme through many of these techniques. Now we'll add a darker shade, but instead of the defined lines, I'm going for loose, rough strokes here. I think this technique is ideal for feathers, fur, snow, anything natural and organic. If your rough strokes are too bold for your liking, you can go back into your lighter shade and blend them out a little bit to soften them. You can also use a lighter shade of marker to lighten the areas of the colours too, or add a different tone. Here I've used a warmer red to brighten the areas of the bird's body. This is a great one to play around with and quick to complete, so I definitely recommend trying this, even if you think it might be a little difficult. It's honestly not. If you have a bit more patience or you want to try an unusual style, this next technique is for you. Again, we're starting with a flat layer of colour, but this time we'll be building up the shadows with layers of little dots in our shadow colours. I always start my dots with the medium shade and go into the darkest shade last, but you can just use one shade if you prefer. You can vary the size of the dots by varying the pressure of touching your marker to the paper, and you can fade the shadows out by placing the dots further apart from each other. 
This technique creates a really striking style of colouring, but I have also seen people use it to emulate specific textures, like on a sugar-coated sweet or a gumdrop. I thought it was perfect for this stamp that already had some dot work going on in the design, and I think the finished result looks really great. For our final technique, we're tackling the most difficult of the styles I have to share with you today. You may have heard of no-line colouring before, as it's a technique that is also used for watercolouring and pencil colouring. It's essentially a style of colouring that hides the lines and suggests the shapes using shadows and different shades. I won't profess to be an expert, but I gave it my best shot to show you how it works. To help you with this technique, it really does help to stamp in a lighter shade that won't show through your colouring. The key to this one is all in the blending, using the lighter coloured markers to create smooth transitions and really emulate those shadows and shapes through your colouring. As with any of these techniques, don't beat yourself up if you don't get it on the first try, or the second, or the third. That's the great thing about stamping. You can just stamp it again and try another day. And with alcohol markers, you can keep blending and keep blending until you get the look you want. You can reactivate the colour, so you could even put it down, give it a couple of hours, you know, have a cup of tea and some cake and come back to it later when you're feeling less frustrated. I do think I did a pretty good job on this no line colouring though. What do you think? Here's a look at all my finished pieces. Which technique was your favourite? Will you be trying any of these? Now I have a bunch of coloured pieces ready to make into cards later. I hope you enjoyed learning about colouring with alcohol markers with me today and that my tips and techniques were helpful to you. All the products I use in this video will be linked down in the description box as well as a 10% discount code for Arteza if you want to save yourself some money. If you did enjoy this video and learn something new please leave them a comment and let me know. I love talking to you all in the comments. If you want to learn more about stamping, card making and paper craft there are tons more videos on my channel that you can check out. I hope to see you back here on my channel and in my craft room very soon but for now bye! Have they gone yet?